everyone and welcome to another video on logarithms. On the introductory video, we learned about the basic definition of a logarithm and also learned that logarithms are meant to actually help us calculate or make multiplication and division with large numbers easy. Today, we are going to talk about the uses and applications of logarithms in real life. Now, have you wondered, or maybe you will wonder after this video, that why scientists and mathematicians all across the world rely on logarithmic scales for massive calculations, right? So there's got to be some reason behind it and the reason why we even have it in our curriculums. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, how about as an experiment, you try this. Take a glass of water, don't have to fill it all the way through, just add one spoon of sugar on one glass, another glass of water, add two spoons of sugar, sip by sip, taste it, one sip from the one spoon and the next sip from the two spoon sugar. When you taste the two spoon sugar, the palate will tell you that it's not twice that of the one spoon sugar, you will find it very sweet. So this is one little example or sort of like an application in real life where we understand that not everything measured in our real life is linear. So hence, these are areas where you see a lot of, you know, it varies drastically. The taste of sugar from one spoon to two spoon is not like double the amount, it's probably even more. Is So you see a lot of variation here. It's not linear. Our brain cells, process information in a logarithmic fashion. That's what this is telling you. Another thing that we measure around us is noise levels, meaning sound. For example, noise uh, in a restaurant, and if that restaurant happens to be playing loud music, you're talking about larger intensities. So even if on a sound scale or a noise scale, that is measured in decimals, we go only one notch above, like going from 60 to 70 decibels. It doesn't feel like a tenfold or a 10 times more. It feels like a hundredth and maybe 10 multiples powers of increase there. So Richter scale was another one that I talked about on my introductory video. And pardon me, I always get confused. Is it Richter or Richter? So why don't most of you just Tell me, is it Richter or Richter? Whichever way. But I'm going to stick with Richter right now. <laughs> okay. So that's my piece to tell you what the applications are. And let's go over some examples. And let me show you a little bit of how this comes into being. All right. See you around. Okay. So let's get started with the examples. So what you see on the screen right here is going to be the basic definition that we learned in the introductory video. If we have a number 2 cube equal to 8 and we write it in the log form, that is log to the base number two, answer eight is equal to three, meaning a logarithm basically answers the question that log to the base number, which is going to be two in this case, here, right here, of the number or the argument, which is a mathematical number, where the answer to the logarithm is going to be that exponent. So the answer to that is going to be 3, meaning if we raise 2 to the power of 3, we will get an answer of 8. That's precisely the idea or the notation of how logarithms are written. Now, talking about applications, let me just show you. Let's say there's a number n, okay? And this is its variation 10 power 0, which technically is going to be 1, then 10 power 1, 10 cube, so on and so forth till 10 power 24. Now, if you notice, if you had to ever plot this on a number line, imagine how many lengths would you be taking? Like zero will be plotted right here for this 10 power zero. And so, I mean, 10 power zero is going to be one. We'll have it here. 10 power one is 10. We'll have it here. 10 cube is thousand. But where are we going to plot 10 power 15, 24? Imagine the length of the number line that's going to go beyond the scope of any screen or even a sheet of paper. So in order to simplify that presentation, we came up with logarithms, as you can see here. So if we converted this number n or used logarithms to denote that, so we write this to the base 10 of that number n. So what we are saying is, then this answer is going to be 0. Actually, instead of 10 power 0, we should have written 1 here. <laughs> and this will be 
so uh, what answer so if you for example if we took log to the base 10 of 1 what is the answer 0 that because when you raise 10 to the power of 0 you get an answer of 1 right so that is what we have here 0 and then 10 power 1 is of course the answer in logarithmic scale is going to be 10 and then for 10 cube we're going to get 3 now so you get the idea we're getting exponents 0 1 9 15 and 24 now these numbers become so easy to work with and to plot on a number line as simple as right here like 0 can be plotted right here 1 here then we have a 3 here and so on and so forth so that's one of the uses of logarithms how they can be simplified now let's talk about something called a richter scale again i'm saying richter so richter scale let's say there's there are three countries one two and three and on a richter scale they measured uh, the intensity of the earthquake like meaning how strong the earthquake was as six seven and eight now does it mean when we say that a country the country one had six versus the country two that had seven it's only a one notch higher what is the intensity felt by the citizens so if we were to plot it these numbers six seven eight are plotted these are numbers for the logarithmic scale this is a the exponent of the base 10. So if R is that number for the Richter scale, six, seven, eight, and I just put in a nine there as well. And if we plot it on a logarithmic scale, so this number R is nothing but 10 power six based on the definition of the logarithm, 10 power seven, 10 power eight, so on and so forth. So now if we were to answer the question, if this was the six was the intensity of country one, intensity of the earthquake in country one and seven was the earthquake intensity in country two eight and three respectively the country two will experience 10 times more strong okay going from 10 but this country two will experience 10 times stronger intensity of earthquake than country one and similarly 10 power 6 and 10 power 8 this will be 100 times more so that's how a logarithmic scale not only simplifies the presentation on a certain scale but it also helps us understand that oh wait a minute if you're talking about logarithmic scale and if the base is 10 so it's a 10 power of that number is the intensity so it's not like directly a linear scale let's get in a little more further i have few more examples so for example in chemistry as well if we wanted to know a particular acidity in a salt, we'll have to know the pH level, meaning how much of the hydrogen ion concentration it is. Even that pH level technically is a logarithmic scale. So as you can see, it is defined as minus of log of the concentration of one hydrogen ion, which is calculated to be seven. And that becomes the reference point of many calculations in the world of chemistry getting to noise levels that are measured in decibels. Please do not confuse decibels to decimals. This is a diff different thing. The alphabet B is the difference here, decibel. Noise is always measured in decibels. So if we had 60 decibels versus 70 versus 80, again, it's a logarithmic scale. These are all examples of logarithmic scales that are used in real life applications for plenty of measurements. Now, I can't limit the presentations here because they keep going on and on. Financials, the basic economics, the, the power function, the ba you know, so many and so on and so forth. And you can even Google it. You can even research on your own, read books and understand how and where all these logarithmic scales are applied. All right. I just end with a graph of a logarithmic function, which, as I had talked at the beginning of the video, that logarithm as a function is not a linear scale. It is not like going as a straight line, as you can see. This is not what a logarithm scale is. It is something like, this is what the shape of a logarithmic scale looks like. And this should help you understand what the basic graph function will be. We're gonna learn more about graphing and properties of logarithms in the subsequent videos. But if you have liked this presentation and you would like to learn more, do let me know in an email. My contact details, as you know, has been provided for your reference. And uh, thank you for staying up for this. All right, thank you, bye-bye.